Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? So welcome back to another Fallout 76 news video and it is all go this week. So we have a new blog post which has a few interesting bits and pieces in it, first and foremost of which is a new dev dive taking a look at the quest design in the Steel Rain update which is due on the 7th of July. So it's pretty interesting here, there's some uh, interesting tidbits to be pulled out of this. So let's jump in, take a little look shall we? Okay then, so new inside the vault blog post, as per usual, down below the video if you want to check it out. Before we jump in, obviously the video we're going to have a look at the mo in a moment, the dev dive, is obviously looking at Steel Rain, it's unreleased content. There'll be some tiny little spoilers in here, so some of that's around and about the story. I don't think it particularly spoils anything major, but uh, if you are wanting to avoid that, here is your heads up and your warning. But uh, before we get straight into that, there's a couple of other things on this article that are worth a quick look. So first up is Fallout at E3. This is a recap on everything that went on at E3 last weekend. I've covered this extensively, so I'm not going to do it again here. But if you do want to check out those videos, I'll link them up in the corner for you. So please do check them out. There's some cool stuff in there. The one on Starfield as well. You should definitely check that one out. Because that is definitely hype. And the other thing before we jump into the video in today's article is we have a Gold Rush weekend this weekend. That starts today at 12pm uh, Eastern Time. So that's running now. And it runs through until 12 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, which is 5 p.m. UK time. So, uh, yeah, if you want to turn in twice as many treasury notes as usual for gold bullion, you can do that over this weekend and uh, get some of my bullying a bit quicker. So that's always nice. So we have a Steel Rain dev dive video here talking about the quest design, as I said. And there's some pretty interesting things in here. We've got some stuff on uh, characters, new characters, old characters that sort of thing some interesting tidbits some stuff on the new locations as well so uh, that's going to be quite cool i'm looking forward to jumping into this so i'm going to get the headphones on and switch the page over and we'll have a little look okay then so here we are on bethesda's uh ug page so we'll have a look at the dev dive on here it's a little bit easier to manage than in the article but either or works so let's see what they've got for us I'm Nate Valenta with the community team for fallout 76. my name is brianna and i'm the lead quest designer on fallout 76. Uh, I'm Carl McEvitt, and I am a quest designer on Fallout 76. Steel Dawn left us with a bit of a cliffhanger. We had gone on some adventures with the Brotherhood of Steel, and there's definitely some tension in the ranks. Um, say that Brianna again. And Carl, where are we going to pick up with the Steel Rain update? Steel Rain starts almost immediately after the events of Steel Dawn. So the Brotherhood leadership is in disarray, facing a giant internal argument about their motives and their next steps. And at the same time, you've just defended their base from an outside attack by super mutants. So the Brotherhood is in crisis, and it's going to be up to the player to step in and help show the Brotherhood the way forward. So I'm just going to stop that there. Obviously, most of this we already know. It's um, reiterating what happened at the end of Steel, uh, Steel Dawn. Um, interesting that it's jumping straight in on the end of that, almost as if no time has passed, which is kind of weird, given how much time has passed. At the same time, Time passing in uh, Fallout is a bit funny anyway. The the first year lasted 18 months or something like that before they turned the Pip-Boy uh, calendar round one and it hasn't moved on any since then and that's been over a year since then as well. So that was uh, when Wastelanders went live. So time in Fallout is a bit of a funny old thing. <laughs> There's definitely a uh, Groundhog Day type thing going on there. Interesting here is the Super Mutants we've just seen that we'll see again in this uh, video further on, but they look very, very weird, and I don't know what to make of that. It's conceivable that it might be a pre-launch thing issue, bug, but at the same time, Super Mutants in the game anyway, it's not that hard to just add more of them into a new environment. So I'm guessing the unique appearance of them here is uh, something to do with the story that is coming up um, in the Steel Rain update, so that would be pretty interesting. Obviously, I know that I could jump onto the uh, PTS and see this in more detail and go into it, but uh, as I said before, I want to experience that on live stream when the whole thing comes out, rather than spoiling it for myself, so there's going to be some speculation as opposed to uh, actually knowing, like some people who have jumped into the PTS actually will. So uh, yeah, let's carry on. Uh, that's right. The choice that you make at the end of Steel Dawn is one that the characters are going to remember. It was something really personal to them. How about... So before we go any further, the choice that you make at the end of Steel Dawn. Now, which one is it? So there's... Um, this is where a big spoiler comes in. The choice between Shin and Romani. Like, who do you side with in the Enclave Bunker? And then there's another subsequent choice, which is whose plan to defend 
Atlas do you uh, go with uh, when it's being attacked by the Super Mean? So I imagine both of those things are going to be remembered um, and will influence it. But it's, it's cool that this is really diving into player choice a lot more and really going for that you know, choices have consequences thing, which they're really playing up here. So I'm hoping that should pan out in an interesting way. Um, we have heard a little bit here and there that it is going to have a significant, obvious, observable effect on uh, sort of the outcomes and the way this goes, so depending on your choices, both in uh, Steel Dawn and subsequently in Steel Rain. So that's really, really cool. And uh, nice to see that despite the fact it's a shared world, they've come up with ways to actually give that at least some form of tangible impact. Cool. Oh, it's some of the returning characters. Uh, is Scribe Valdez coming back? I know you had mentioned Paladin Romani and Knight Shin will play a pretty prominent role. Um, but how about anyone else that we met during Steel Dawn? Are, are they going to be back and will our choices be remembered by them too? Yeah, uh, it's actually, we've got quite a ca cast of characters that are going to be returning for this one. Some of them from Steel Dawn, some of them from content even earlier than that. Uh, we really want Appalachia to feel like a living world and that the decisions you were making were kind of affecting these other groups and these other people. Yeah, characters coming back not just from uh, Steel Dawn to influence the story going forward, but characters from other parts of the game's history that have been around for longer um, have appeared earlier in previous storylines. They're going to be popping back up again to have a, a role to play in Steel Rain, which is really, really cool. So uh, Scribe Valdez, as an example, is a character who's deeply rooted into the Brotherhood. Um, she's going to be a big part of the story still. Um, she's she's kind of where the player is. Um, she's between, you know, the, the two big thoughts on the Brotherhood, and uh, she assists the player in um, some quests and, and making those tough decisions. Ooh, I'm intrigued by the earlier content you mentioned. So who's... Valdez, I think, is one of everybody's favourites, irrespective of which side of the Brotherhood you come down on. It's kind of cool that she's uh, in the middle and will be the, that middle ground that you can jump off from in uh, making decisions. That's what I I do like that. It's coming back that we're going to meet meet up with from content that we've already played. Uh, so one good example is a character, uh, Marsha, who was a, uh, a member of the Brotherhood, not necessarily an initiate, but she was travelling with them and her younger brother, Max, um, they were characters that were hanging around in Port Atlas, and we start to get to see more stories with them involved in kind of the way that they've uh, they've been interacting with the Brotherhood. We've so if I remember rightly, Marsha and Max are uh, the two kids, basically. They hang out in the basement of Port Atlas, down in a kitchen underneath where their command room is. Um, to have those two interacting in a more serious way, and you can see Marsha here who's carrying a combat rifle, that's... Uh, that's big. Uh, they're supposed to be pretty darn young, so it'd be interesting to see where that story goes. Having certainly Marsha out there armed and uh, getting herself into serious trouble could be an interesting thing. I wonder if it'll be part of the main story or if it'll be a side thread. It'd be interesting. We've also got uh, the, the Raider War Party, which you either in a friendly or not so friendly way interacted with. Glad this uh, is going to come back to uh, once again, interact again. Into. Um, and we get to see some some interesting evolutions of those characters and uh, their their relationship with the Brotherhood. How about beyond the Brotherhood itself and, and beyond Fort Atlas? Are we going to be meeting up with any factions or characters who are outside their walls? One of the groups uh, that players will encounter I... during Steel Rain is called the Hellcat Mercenaries. And their origins and their purpose in the storyline um, are will be a spoiler. I'm not going to go too much into who they are, but... They are a group of professional soldiers that are tied up in the story and that you're going to encounter as uh, antagonists as you're playing through. Uh, another group is the Blue Ridge Caravan Company. So we've got the Hellcat Mercenaries. We've heard about the Hellcat Power Armor um, from various sources in that it's on the PTS. Kind of. You can't actually see it, but it, it's sort of there. Um, so we now know that the Hellcats are going to be a mercenary group who seem to be somewhat evil aligned want of a better way of putting it who are going to appear in this and have an influence on the story so that's very very cool always good to see new factions and a lot of people asking about uh, factions coming in most people are looking towards factions we've seen before like the enclave but uh, new ones are always welcome as well uh, yeah remember the impact of the atom cats for example in uh, fallout 4 brand new faction landed in there and uh, a lot of people like them they were only a small group but they were very very cool i liked them a lot as well so the hellcat mercenaries could be potentially interesting and add a new dynamic to the ever-evolving wasteland of Appalachia, which obviously we know started out with nobody in it. Now people have come back and more and more people are repopulating and their wasteland is evolving, which is really, really cool. I think that's quite interesting. 
one of the fun things about 76 is, particularly as a long-term player, the Wasteland really has evolved, which kind of came even later than you won't see it quite the same way, I shouldn't imagine. But um, yeah, seeing it from that desolate Wasteland with nobody in it to Settlers written, Raiders returning to the Brotherhood arriving, and now you've got other groups coming in as well, and potentially other stuff on down the, the line as well. There's a lot going to change in the Wasteland, so it's going to be really interesting. Even the existing map that we've been wandering around for however long at this point, uh, two and a half years, is still evolving in a really, really cool way. So that's that's quite a cool thing, something I'm quite excited for. Company, uh, They were a faction involved in the riding shotgun event, uh, but they are involved with the Brotherhood this time around and some of the, the larger stories that are happening um, in Steel Rain. And so it'll be really exciting to revisit them. Interesting. Yeah, I yeah, wanted to see some more use out of uh, Blue Ridge being made. Community, so they will be excited That's to really, see really cool. Hype taking a bigger that. part in a story uh, portion of the quest. Um, so when it comes to something like that, for example, like the Blue Ridge Caravan or a new faction like the Hellcat Mercenaries, what is your thought process when it comes to weaving them into a new quest or a new storyline? So when we go to create a new group like the Hellcat Mercenaries, what we do is look into the lore of Appalachia. Uh, where might they come from? What's their origin? What have they been doing since the war? Finally, what do they look like? Do they have a uniform? Who are they represented by? Who joins them? And uh, what role do they play in the story? So what we found in Appalachia is when you encounter human groups, you're most often running into raiders or cultists. And the Hellcats represented an opportunity for us to bring in a more organized military group that might operate differently and have a different impact on Appalachia. There's two things there. Firstly, the uh, existing audio bug is flaring up in their footage there, which is hilarious. Um, hopefully they get that sorted out. The other thing is, um, they sound a lot like the Gunners, if maybe a little smaller in uh, style, in a more organised mercenary group and the influence they're going to have on Appalachia. There's a conversation there about what kind of uniforms they may or may not have and how they operate and how they're going to impact the, the wasteland. So it's really, really cool to see the kind of level of consideration, which... It's not really something that comes as a surprise, but it should mean that they could be potentially quite an interesting group to interact with. If they survive beyond Steel Rain and the storyline, it would be interesting to see what uh, role they have to play in Appalachia as a whole once the Steel Rain storyline ends. Hopefully that means endgame content related to them in some way, or their influence or um, interaction with other elements of the game, which would be really cool. But we'll have to wait until you find out. And for something like Blue Ridge, uh, that's the, a case where we were building content and we felt like it would make the most sense to have a faction that's kind of uh, responsible for this. And it was it was a really fun process to be part of something where you're building kind of from the ground up uh, an entire history of a faction like that, how they uh, existed before the war, war and what their motivations are now. Um, and it was really built all around that content initially, but it's fun now to evolve that and kind of say, okay, th maybe they were here just to supplement this event, but now they're kind of integrated more into the world, which means they bump into other factions like the Brotherhood. And how, how do those two parties interact with each other? Yeah, as I said before, I'm really, really hyped to have some more stuff for Blue Ridge Caravan. I thought they were a potentially interesting group. There was a um, the Crimson Caravan in New Vegas that were one of the factions that stood out to me as being sort of particularly good at bringing some element of realism and life to that wasteland. Well, Blue Ridge obviously will have a role that makes a lot of sense. Caravans traveling is kind of the fundamental basis of the whole sort of post-apocalyptic world, for the way I put it. Like the, the Nuka-Cola bottle cap currency is based on the price of water being traded by caravans. So it's a long established thing in Fallout Law, the presence of caravan companies and things like that. So having um, Appalachia's own version of that, the Blue Ridge, is really cool. And there's some really good characters in there as well. So uh, including like people from different backgrounds as well, are kind of a, a bit of a melting pot of a faction as well. So really, really cool to have that expanded out and hopefully find out a bit more about them, get to know a bit more about their history and their goals and their future and see them interact with other groups. It's going to be awesome. Really, really happy for that. Are we going to be looking at uh, new locations? in this quest line? Oh, yeah. Yes, cool so you'll be visiting here. a combination of older locations that you might not have explored thoroughly in the past or that have some new things going on in them, as well as some locations that we're, we've added just for Steel, for Steel Rain. Uh, one of my favorites is the Uncanny Caverns, which is a location that's been in the game from the beginning. It's got a fascinating history and story of its own, yep, but it's it cool really, location. you're going to see it in a new light during Steel Rain. 
Um, you're going to explore some parts that, that you've never been to before, and you're going to see some changes in the environment that have recently taken place. So that's cool. Uncanny Caverns is uh, a location you drop into for some side quests and stuff, but uh, in terms of its actual usage, it's relatively minor. It's just a place that happens to exist. So seeing that gets some more use, especially given that it's an interesting location. It's quite a cool little dungeon. It sounds like it's going to be expanded on as well. There's some um, amazing lighting down there, incidentally, for those who are into the photo mode stuff. But yeah, that'll be really cool. It'll be interesting to explore that and see what new stuff's going on down there, what uh, groups might be involved. That looks like a very injured knight or paladin down there, probably a knight from the look of the back of their head. So, uh, hmm, interesting things occurring. So, uh, a lot of intrigue, a lot of cool stuff. And, and we, it's fairly normal for these updates to include old locations and updated locations and new ones as well. And the choices they've made this time look quite cool, I have to admit. Um, some are fairly obvious and not surprising. Ones like this are pretty cool. Um, yeah, the new one's coming up in a minute. Hmm, I'm interested in those. Uh, another example is Harper's Ferry. Uh, there's a big landmark there, the bridge and the tunnel. Uh, we'll get to explore yeah. what's inside that tunnel, which is something I personally wanted to do um, since the game launched. Uh, and we'll see quite a few secrets in there, um, even some callbacks to some earlier content. I won't uh, spoil what those are, but uh, that's a really fun new environment. So yeah, that bridge outside Harper's Ferry, sort of right on the edge of the map, is somewhere um... Quite a few people have built over the years, but some more recently, some further back. Uh, used to be highly irradiated, and then more recently is not irradiated. And I'm guessing it's going to be a uh, you can't build here anymore thing once uh, Steel Rain goes in, because obviously there were more people blocking up the entrance uh, for the quest line. So those who are building there already may want to bear that in mind and um, move your camp before you are forced to leave it. Uh, but interesting, it's. There are a few of these sort of train tunnels around Appalachia that lead outside of the map. Um, there's obviously the existing one that goes, Big Ben Tunnel, that crosses the map. But there's a couple around the edges as well that can lead outside, and a couple of points that might be pathways to exit the uh, existing map. Like there's the bridge at Harpers Ferry, uh, uh, not Harpers Ferry, opposite side of the map. Point Pleasant. But um, I think that is uh, historically destroyed for a long time, I'm not sure. But either way, that's a theoretical way you could head out into the west a little bit further. So this is one example. It'll be interesting to see where this goes because it's it kind of does leave it off the map. I don't imagine it's going to take us to whole new areas of the map, but who knows? One day it might. This might be a, a cool precursor to that. And if nothing else, it looks like it's going to be a really cool uh, location dungeon to explore. So down for that. How about rewards? We're helping out the Brotherhood. We're doing all this hard work for them. What's in it for us at the end of the quest line? You're going to get a variety of great rewards for finishing the Steel Ring quest line. Um, one of the things that you're going to see is the Face Breaker Power Fist, which is a custom cool. uh, Power Fist that you'll receive pretty early on in the quest line. Um, there are also a couple of outfits that you'll be able to collect. Uh, a new mercenary outfit that's associated with the Hellcats, as well as a civilian outfit for a member of the Brotherhood that you get to spend some time with during the, the quest chain. That's cool. It looks like those um, outfits will probably be tied to specific quests. It's not a massive surprise there, but interesting to know that the mercenary outfit is going to be part of the Hellcats thing. And I was wondering where it was going to come from because it's quite a cool looking outfit. It's got a lot of um, repaired up the damaged worn leather with um, bandoliers on them, which is quite cool. And then you've got the Brotherhood Civvies one, which is kind of less interesting um, as outfits go, at least to me anyway. Uh, I'm sure others disagree, but it's kind of cool to see what people who are not on duty um who are more perhaps more peripheral members of the brotherhood where that also indicates their membership in the faction and it sounds like that's also going to come from a quest and interaction with a specific character as well which is cool so that'll be pretty interesting um for your camp there's going to be a cryogenic bed for you to sleep in if you like a futuristic look or the high technology look and weird, finally okay. there's a whole new set of power take that back a tiny little bit so a whole new set of power armor, she's saying, and that is uh, the Hellcat suit, which I'm guessing this is the X01 variant of that. I'm sure there will be different ones for different uh, types of power armor. But interesting, it looks like kind of deliberately painted in a uniform style in this brown color. The, uh, the visor's uh, very... I'm thinking Battlestar Galactica, actually, off that. It looks a bit like a Cylon. Um, but there's some cool stuff in there. It's kind of solid. It's... Uh, somewhat military without uh, without any frills or any bells and whistles. I kind of like the look of that. That's quite cool. 
Um, interested to see if this does vary based on the power armor it's put on, or if it's uh, pick focused on a unique style. It would make more sense for it to vary. Um, the X01 is supposedly tied into the Enclave, particularly at this point in time, and only available within it. The only reason the players have access to it is because in the Scorched Blade quest line, the original one, you join up the Enclave. So you get it from them, but um, the idea that the Hellcat group might have it is unlikely, so I'm guessing it's more of a generic this is our power armor uniform, and then it's just applied to different skins, uh, to different power armor suits, rather, uh, as a skin, but that's pretty cool. Apparently there's a whole new set of power armor that is custom themed for the Hellcats. And as a quick side note, that Hellcat power armor has a few special bonuses when you're wearing it. So if you're interested awesome. in acquiring a set, definitely complete the Steel Rain questline and get your hands on it. So special bonuses, does this basically mean, well, I mean, it can mean a lot of things, but it wouldn't be terribly surprised to find out that it meant it kind of falls into the category of um, a unique item, which might actually mean it only has the one uh, style. It might just be that one sort of XO1-esque style, which would be weird, but uh, it might also be that applying the paint brings with it certain legendary uh, attributes or a certain combination of them making it a unique item which again would be a bit weird but uh, interesting to see how that pans out or if it maybe exists as a separate suit that uh, is modeled on x01 i don't know um it'll be interesting to see how that goes anyway but uh, yeah cool definitely into that so depending on how you role play your character you might have allegiances to different factions you might have better relationships with one faction than another like the raiders or the settlers of foundation and both of those factions are ones that you encountered and have their own reactions to the brotherhood and how you represented yourself and the Brotherhood to them is going to matter. Additionally, a lot of people that you had encounters with are going to remember how you treated them and what your attitude was. And that's going to come into play with how much they trust you or how, what they think of you moving forward as uh, the Brotherhood storyline continues. And I think so that's interesting. Um, it's good to know that those um, choices that you've made as a player from other parts of the game are going to hopefully influence it. We saw uh, the player there meeting with Paige. Um, in Steel Dawn, the only member of the settlers that we encountered, uh, and the same thing actually true of the Raiders, were new individuals, not part of the previous Wastelanders storyline. So it looks like the choices you made during Wastelanders might figure a bit more into the Steel Rain storyline, which is cool. That's taking that um, choice as having consequences and having meaning thing and amping it up a, another notch as well, which is really, really cool. And, very very down for that's definitely a significant step in the right direction okay so there's a couple of bits towards the end there talking about uh, little mysteries and uh, some interesting stuff from the developer standpoint but not massively so much from a player side i think well, some of it is so if you want to check it out then as i said i'll link all this down below so you can find the article down there if you do want to watch this back yourself and uh, see the bits that i've cut out but yeah there's some really interesting stuff in there some of the new locations the new factions the rewards um yeah about what we'd expect they're cool um some people will be more into them than others, but uh, yeah, there's some interesting stuff in there. I uh, would have liked to see a bit more camp stuff. There probably is more camp stuff than I actually mentioned here, but uh, you know, I'm always all for that. But yeah, it looks like there's going to be some cool locations, some interesting stories, the sort of consequences of the actions and choices and the role playing decisions we make being a bigger part is really cool. For the most part, that's going to stay contained within um, the Brotherhood and Steel Rain, which is kind of what you'd expect because there's only so far outside they can go. Uh, with those sort of things before it starts to get really complex and really messy and uh, yeah that can make obviously the more interactions you have the more possibilities the more complexity of the, the development of the game and it's it could get very messy especially as time goes on that obviously is going to snowball anyway so they keep doing this sort of thing so i can kind of see why they kind of contain the um consequences of your actions a little bit and keep them a bit more segmented out but uh, still very, very cool. It's nice to see uh, choices having consequence in uh, a game like this. So very, very much down for that. Some really cool stuff. So I hope you found this interesting and informative. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes for me. It's always very, very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store and channel memberships are all available down below the video as well. If you want to support the channel in that way, it really, really helps out. So a massive thank you to everybody who's done that already. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, continuing on with Mass Effect and Fallout 76, and looking forward to that shiny new content very, very soon. So very, very hyped for that. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very soon.